Hello and welcome to ANC Decides, the show that brings you the ANC presidential race as it happens. I'm your host, Mfundo Mabalani. Let's start our show with our ANC election race headlines from across the country. Now, firstly, Kasatu's march against state capture turns into an electioneering platform. Kasatu and SACP campaign for Sil Ramaphosa to succeed President Jacob Zuma at the ANC's elective conference. Free State ANC PC still in consultation with Latuli House on holding its Provincial Congress in November. This is despite Gwede Mantashe's call to put Provincial Congresses on hold after September the 30th. And it's all systems go for the Eastern Cape's ANC elective conference tomorrow. Eastern Cape Provincial Secretary Oscar Mabuyane is challenging the current chairperson Pumulo Masuela. The Kasatu march against state capture and corruption has turned into a campaign platform ahead of the ANC's elective conference. Kasatu leaders used the national strike to stage a campaign for Deputy President Sil Ramaphosa to succeed President Jacob Zuma. The leaders praised Ramaphosa for what he did for the trade union movement. Kasatu is a vocal supporter of Ramaphosa within the tripartite alliance. Meanwhile, Kasatu's latest move raises questions about the march being used as an anti-Zuma platform. Today, comrades, all over the country, this Kosatu is talking with one voice. There are no different voices. This Kosatu has stood out to say they shall also advance their decision and their position to push and beg and persuade members of the ALC in their branches, where we also participate as members for the ANC in the 54th National Conference of the ANC, amongst the collective leadership that shall be elected, they must give Cyril Ramaphosa a chance to lead the ANC. Now joining us in the studio are political analyst Zamo Malala and Papano Pasha. Uh, Zamo, at least for you, welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon, Funda. Thank no, you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Yes. Now, first things first, I don't think we can divorce today's March or today's events to the elective conference. What do you make of Kasatu taking to the streets two months before the elective conference? Because we've got many asking that which Kasatu is actually marching today? Is it the Labour Federation that represents those on the periphery of our economy? Or is it Kasatu, the third leg of the ANC as part of the tripartite alliance? Or is this Kasatu the faction? Because they've decided that they're going to be at least pushing or rooting for Sil Ramaphosa. So which Kasatu did we see today take to the streets? Well, I, I suppose it depends on, on who you stand as a person to, to actually really define. Um, a true member will say, no, it was just Kasatu, but everyone pretty much can realize that it wasn't a workers movement type strike. It wasn't fighting for any specific rights of any worker whatsoever. Um, it was more, I think, a, a boost for the campaign of the Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa and as it was pretty much turned into a sort of elective um, march or sort of a, a way of campaigning for him to show that there is strong support amongst other alliance members. I don't think it was the COSATU, the Labour Federation. It was more the COSATU, the political arm of it, that mm -hmm. is part of the tripartite alliance that was marching. Hence, they called in the SACP um, to come and join them in the march and anybody else who was interested. I believe um, the Gauteng ANC had said something about Joining that they, march, they yes. would join the march. Mm -hmm. so, but, but then the impact thereof, can we say less than 100 days to the selective conference, is there much impact? Can they tilt the scale uh, in favour of their candidate? Well, I, I don't really know because the way I understand the ANC, it is the ANC members who are going to make a decision and they make that decision sometime in December through the branches. It is not a average South African like me that is going to have a say, as much as the media is involved and everybody's talking about it and all of that. There's roughly under 800,000 ANC members, I believe, and they are ultimately going to be the people who decide who, decide who becomes the next ANC president. Mm -hmm. That's really what it's about. So 
the whole campaigning against the current president, that I, I don't particularly understand the logic behind Zamo? it. Are we hmm? not downplaying perhaps the impact or influence that this tripartite alliance has, at least Kosatu and the SACP? Because, I mean, it happened. When the likes of Zulim Zimavav, who were still part of Kasatu, many argue they were instrumental in the president's uh, ascension to power. So why it's, today would we downplay their influence? I mean, at least they're getting a platform all over the media. So you well, don't think that electorate, the one that can vote, might not be swayed today by what they've seen in the streets? Well, what, what I've come to see and understand is that members of the African National Congress attend African National Congress um, events which start from their branch meetings. It's people that are actually actively involved within the ANC. So it's not people that you're going to go, I think, sway one way or the other by pulling a stunt on national television or doing a march or um, making noises. I, I would believe that their strategy ought to be more aligned to the this is why our candidate is the guy that should take over going forward, rather than trying to campaign against a sitting president who has said that he will leave at the end of his term. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the whole campaign that has been pushed by Kosatu, by the SACP, is more against the current president, who is not actually campaigning for the future leadership of the ANC nor the country. He, he has openly said he will um, give up the reins of the ANC presidency in December and the reins of the country in 2019. So why is anyone campaigning against him? Mm -hmm. I, I, I just simply don't, I can't join the dots. Mm -hmm. no, yes, it's, it's the hype, but it's, it's what gets the country going, it's what gets people talking, um, it's all capture, state capture, it's all the Guptas, it's all of that. But that's the um, so you Hustle say and basically it's to their detriment to center their campaign around the president or state capture. They should be more focused about telling the ordinary citizens what Sir Ramaphosa offers. Well, I think they should be telling the ANC members mm -hmm. why Sir Ramaphosa is the guy. Okay. That's, that's what it ought to be about because it's the ANC members that are going to decide. It's not the country. Mm -hmm. There's 800,000 people that are going to make this decision. No, it's an interesting one. Perhaps we can rope in Papanu. Papanu, welcome to you. Uh, your take on Kasatu today, we saw them take to the streets. Your view, was this disingenuous? Was it really about state capture or, or not? Because we heard some chanting, uh, we're ready for Ramaphosa. Could we say it was a bit of a factional campaign to a certain extent or it was genuine? They're fighting against state capture and corruption. Um, well... Uh, Kosatu has made it clear that they do support Cyril Ramaphosa and they want the president to go. So one can say, in fact, uh, you know, one can say that uh, it was a factional uh, a decision by Kosatu uh, to actually march today. In fact, I think uh, what they are trying to do is to say we want to show our might as, as Kosatu, uh, but over and above that, I think what, what has happened uh, in, in the few months is that there are many people who've wanted the president to leave office. Because you, you, you see, um, if the president uh, or continues to be president until December, dynamics might change at conference. So what Alliance members are trying to do is they're trying to remove the president before the December conference so that his influence at the conference is limited. So you are, you are dealing with some of those dynamics beyond the issue of, of state capture. Because mm. in, in, in relation to state capture, I mean, there are many aspects into this. Uh, Kosatu is an employer at the same time. So we'll have to cross to her. But an interesting point, we need to come back to that, where you say that perhaps they're looking to have him leave so that they limit his influence ahead of that elective conference. But we're joined by our reporter, Giovanni Machani, who's out on the free state. Uh, Gio. Uh, welcome to you. Uh, take us through the Free State today. What exactly has been taking place? We know that uh, the ANC chair there, Ace Mahashule, is insisting that they want to go to their conference in November. Why the insistence to pursue this conference when Gwede Mantashe has already put this moratorium? 
indeed. Good afternoon to you, Mfunda, and good afternoon to the viewers. We do know that uh, politics is a very complex type of environment to be present in, especially now in South Africa, ahead of the governing party, the ANC's elective conference that will be happening in December. Definitely so, as we've heard from the PEC, which happened last night, that uh, the Free State Chair, that the Ace Mahashule said that as a province, they will be backing Nkosa Zanatlamini Zuma, as well as stating is that, that them as a province have decided that it would suit them well to have their provincial conference in November despite the call by National SG Gwede Mantashe stating that should it have not happened by the 30th of September it might need to have to take a break until 2018. So definitely a lot of back and forth but the conversation will be from the Free State, the NEC members from the Free State going into the NEC that is taking place this weekend. They are planning to bring this to table definitely like the SG said during the National Policy Conference that it needs to be robust debates, a back and forth of discussion so we're hoping that behind closed doors this is the kind of principle that they too live by. Mm -hmm. We also know in the Free State there is a festival that is happening called Diponzo and tomorrow they will be feeding on this radical economic transformation or this uh, inclusion that uh, uh, S Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa has uh, said it to be. So feeding into the NDP the five years that uh, President Jacob Zuma has stated the growth of South Africa that's needed, you know, issues, social ills that South Africa is facing such as you a youth unemployment will be addressed tomorrow. So it is going to be a big day here in the free state in the side of Puta di Chaba. So we await tomorrow and see the growth that will come from the ANC. But they continue to stress the need for unity, the need for a unifying candidate. So going forth, we are expecting that obviously their behavior will lead in the same direction. No, Gio, thank you very much for that. We'll continue to keep in touch with you as the day progresses. And it's all systems go for the Eastern Cape's ANC Provincial Congress. Two candidates are going head-to-head -head for provincial chairperson position. Eastern Cape Provincial Secretary Oscar Mabuyane is challenging the current chairperson in the upcoming provincial elective conference. The conference starts just days before the ANC closes the window for provincial congresses. Mabuyane's challenge to Pumulo Masuela is seen as ultimately having an influence on the province's preferred candidate at the ANC's elective conference in December. However, the jury is still out on who of the seven ANC presidential candidates holds sway in the crucial province. ANC is a, is a democratic organization and its conferences uh, are meant, uh, amongst other things, to elect leadership. But uh, more important, to focus on the issues of uh, policy development in the ANC, policy formulation, etc., etc., because that's what makes ANC to be relevant in the society. We will only know when we get into the conference when the Independent Electoral Commission tells us who is nominated, whether the person makes threshold or not, whether people are accepting nominations or not. ...to impact on how do we look at it, because you'll find that uh, people might have different preferences here, only to realize that they work together, going to national. But what we can say, Eastern Cape will go to national solid as a province, it will be a province that will try to bring a panacea to the challenges of the ANC at a national level. We can't be uh, exacerbating the problems that are there. We must bring solutions to the problems that are there. We must jealously guard the traditions of the ANC and how the ANC has been electing its leadership. With uh, all conferences, there is always the question of leadership uh, preferences. We are a very vibrant province, as you know. Uh, coming to this province, uh, I mean, to this conference, we also have a very vibrant, dynamic uh, environment of uh, leadership preferences. That's all going to find expression at conference, and the delegates at conference uh, will be able to, uh, through the democratic process, help resolve that question, but after that we'll all be united around the leadership that is going to emerge at conference. Now our reporter Nomusa Pungula joins us live from East London. Nomusa, welcome to ANC Decides. I hope you're doing quite well there in East London. Just, I know you spoke to both candidates today. We could call these two uh, allies come rivals if we must. They've worked together since 2008. How is the atmosphere now?
So for the African National Congress in the Eastern Cape for their conference come tomorrow. But the most important thing is that the two men that have been working together for so many years are going head to head against each other. Speaking to them earlier on, we realize or we pick up a, a sense of where a sense that there will be a very tent contestation at the at the at the, at the conference come this weekend. But also Oscar Mabuyano is the current Secretary General of the province said that uh, it is not something that is new within the African National Congress because it is in the DNA of the African National Congress to contest each other because it is a very democratic organization. But another thing that was mentioned by the current chairperson which is Kumulo Masaule is that uh, they are in this very close race but at the end of the day it is the delegates that are going to decide who they want to lead them and most importantly they are the ones that are are going to pronounce leadership that will need to be supported by everyone whether they were contesting or were in support of the other team that did not win in the elective conference of the Eastern Cape. But you will remember Numfundo that uh, Eastern Cape was one of those uh, provinces that were very very strong in the ANC elective conferences. You would remember that those that were supported by them they were definitely going to win the elective conferences. Speaking to them about the December elective conference, they mentioned that it would be premature for them to pronounce as they are going to sit the provincial conference and the provincial conference will then pronounce who is their preferred candidate because they had been making sure that they are putting all their efforts and time to this conference that is coming up for the weekend. But what we've seen on the ground is that there is definitely two camps of NDZ as well as Cyril Ramaphosa. As we speak right now, the Dr. Hubusani region is uh, sitting here at the city hall in, 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 the, in, the, in the East London. They are waiting for their leadership to decide whether the RGC will sit or not today. They were a bit of hindrance, but as, at the end of the day, we wait to see whether they are going to sit or not. So it's certainly going to be a very tight one, I must say, and hopefully there will be tolerance because we know that in such instances there'd be a lot of political intolerance that rears its ugly head. But thank you very much. We'll keep in touch with you as our conference progresses. Now, that is our reporter, Nomusa Pumulo, who's out in East London uh, talking to us about that contest between the two, the chair and his provincial secretary. And now our reporter, Lebohang Foke, is, joins us. Lebohang, a very good afternoon to you. You're still in Pumala. Mm. Yes, uh, good afternoon to you Mfundo and thank you very much indeed. You are correct, we are still in Mpumalanga and today we find ourselves in Inkomazi uh, in Ward 10 where by-elections are currently uh, taking place. We understand that uh, the uh, current uh, ward councillor in this particular ward uh, passed away unfortunately a couple of months ago and therefore these, these elections come as a result of that and uh, the ANC today uh, have come out in their numbers and they're saying that they want to reclaim this ward. I understand that there has been, you know, a very intensified campaign as there was also an, uh, a Siang Ngoba rally that was held here yesterday, also addressed by the chairperson of the province, David Mabuza. But to talk to us more about that, I have with me the election uh, manager uh, with me, uh, Mandla Msibi, to talk to us about, you know, how they intend to win back this ward. Mandla, thank you so much for joining us. Just Talk to us about, you know, the road of campaigning and how you got to this point. Will the ANC win this ward? No, thank you very much. Uh, and to all your listeners, we, we are indeed going to win because it was our ward. Unfortunately, God has his way. Then he's taken our councillor. We have campaigned very well, as we have indicated that we had a rally and there was a massive attendance. So we're going to get, we're going to get 90% plus in terms of the percentage. Mm. And also you have been here uh, since very early in the morning and some of the ANC supporters and members are here today. But just take us through the turnout from the people that have been voting here today. Actually, with the leadership of the ANC, both from the region and the province, and all our deployed cadres, mayors, councillors, MP and MPLs, 
we've got massive comrades volunteers who are here. Um, we, we, we have started yesterday with the special votes and the turnout was a little bit poor, but today we are already beyond 35% turnout vote and we expect that we'll get more than 75%. And out of the 75%, we'll get 90%. Opposition parties, you can see, they will share the rest because they can share the 10% out of the 100% and we'll get the 9, 10 plus. Well, thank you very much. That was Manjlam Sibi, the election uh, manager in this area, actually in the province. And uh, we also know that uh, the results will be announced a little bit later on, and that is when we will know whether ANC will retain leadership in this ward or not. Back to you, Mfundo, in studio. Thank you very much, Lemohang. We'll keep in touch as the conference progresses. That is our reporter, Lemohang Fok, who's out in Gomazi in Bumalanga, which remains the ANC stronghold. So, uh, there they're looking to have their by-elections following the untimely death of their ward councillor there. And back to my guest, panel, if we had to start in the Eastern Cape, we've got here this leadership race. You've got the Premier or the Chair of the ANC in Eastern Cape, Pumulo, as well as his PS, his Provincial Secretary, Oscar. If we had to talk about this obsession or perhaps how we all seem to think that the PEC somehow will be a decider in the elective conference. Are, are we okay? Are we on the right track to constantly be saying whomever will be leading now will somehow influence? Because we've got regions, we've got branches. Regions can differ from the position of the province itself. Even the branches can differ. So why do we seem to all be obsessed with thinking that uh, whomever is heading the PEC will ultimately consolidate his province and everybody comes out with one name? Well, it it doesn't necessarily follow in that way, but the, the minute the, pro the province is going with a p particular candidate, that candidate obviously ha holds a particular stronger hammer than the other candidate who doesn't hold the support because the regions report to province. So province has got access to the regions to influence them and to lobby them. The regions have then got access to the branches. So it, it sort of it's, it, it flows down that mm -hmm. if a particular province is going a particular way, the likelihood is that the majority of that province, for instance, the, the outcome of the Eastern Cape race will tell you in majority because it's, it's actually the branches of the Eastern Cape that are going to choose this leader. So if they choose a particular leader, then it's going to give you an indication that the Eastern Cape branches are likely to lean a particular way. I'm not way. convinced. I'm, Papa, I'm going to take you. We actually should go to Johannesburg because this is where perhaps it becomes a, a relevant question because we've got here the Joburg region. Are they going to go with the province's position? Let's just hear. Our reporter, Cindy Siwa Twala, is at Lutuli House. She has met the leadership of the ANC in Joburg's region. Cindy, welcome to you. Now, we have seen, Cindy, welcome to you. Now, we've seen that in some provinces you have a provincial position, but there's tendency for some regions or even branches to differ or sway away from that uh, provincial position. What is the position in Johannesburg? A very good evening to you, Numfundo, as well as your studio guests and those at home. Uh, quite uh, goodly cited that sometimes you find that there are particular regions that differ from the provincial structure. But what we found when speaking to the spokesperson of the Johannesburg region, Mr. Jody uh, Matongo, he basically cited that they are waiting for the NEC to pronounce as to when they can start making their pronouncements. He also mentioned that the branches are the ones that need to also say who in particular that they are willing to stand with. We know that last week, Monday, the PEC met and basically spoke extensively on the fact that they have not pronounced on any particular candidate they're going to be supporting in the very wide pool that has been put out in the media space and a lot of campaigning has been taking place that basically stated that they're still waiting to be convinced or they're still waiting rather to find or to declare who they're going to be stating to be following up. We know that the Gauteng PEC initially met with uh, the Mpumalanga province uh, just a month ago in August, uh, towards the end of August. And they basically spoke extensively. Coming out of that meeting, the PWC stated that uh, they're going to be talking about unity throughout. But I have my guest with me to basically say in quick, uh, quickly from the Johannesburg region her point of view in this regard. A very, very good uh, evening 
it to you, Mamatsidi Somfiko. Your stance, what is the Johannesburg stance moving forward? It's not my stance. I belong to an executive committee that represents branches. As, as Jolly D has said, that our branches are here to make the pronouncements. We are waiting for the final go-ahead from the SG as to when can our BGMs be held so that our branches can do the nominations as well as do their delegates for the national conference. We are subscribing to the notion of unity. We want to, to ensure that our organization comes out of the national conference stronger and in a position to deal with all the challenges that we have. You know that we've lost the city of Joburg, so we need to reclaim it. And we believe that with strong organization and strong branches, we will be able to reclaim the city. Thank you so much. That was a branch member or regional member, rather, of the Johannesburg region, stating that Johannesburg wants to foster unity within the organization moving forward, and they stand by the PC's decision to not state any names until the person has been tested through the eye of the needle. Back to you in studio. Thank you very much, Cindy. We'll communicate as the conference continues. That's our reporter, Cindy Siwetwala, out at Lutuli House. Papado, uh, some high discipline there. She was quick to quickly say it's not my stance. That is the stance of the Johannesburg region. Do you think they're going to exhibit that discipline to say whatever the province decides will become the region as well's position? Um, I don't necessarily think that's what they're saying. I think what they're saying is that uh, they're just waiting for the pronouncement, the official pronouncement. That's when Johannesburg will take a stand. But I think there has been subtle, uh, you know, gestures in terms of where they might be going. Because if you look at some of uh, the leadership within uh, the executive, uh, some of them have been uh, wearing a uh, Ramaphosa as a, a, a T-shirt. But uh, one would not necessarily say that uh, that is the position of Johannesburg. But historically, uh, what we know is that uh, Johannesburg in the main has mainly gone with uh, what the PEC decides. Okay. So it, it might be different this time. And I'm not sure uh, in terms of unity what uh, might uh, that mean. But I, I wanted to, to, to quickly speak on another point. Uh, if you look at the dynamics between 2012 and now, provinces might still be powerful, but they don't hold sway as before. All right. if, yes, if, if, if you go to different provinces, for example, you go to your northwest, uh, you come to Houghton as well, uh, the, you know, there, there might be uh, different regions uh, which might break away from uh, what uh, uh, the province might decide. Mm. Uh, you know, it's becoming yeah. very tricky. Yeah. Honestly, very tricky here because we thought, we thought at the very least that uh, Houghton was probably behind Sir Ramaphosa, but following what we saw happening in Pumalanga, I'm sure many people would say they don't know. But thank you very much, panel, for joining us this evening. And that's where we leave it until next time on ANC Decides.